Twitter at Cass said, how do you maintain that AJR sound while reinventing yourselves and your music with each album? Ooh, great question. It's a great <laughs> starter. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's something that we think about constantly. It's something that uh, kind of keeps us up at night because uh, we we definitely feel like we are uniquely ourselves and we kind of invented this thing, whatever it is, of of being so blatant in the music and there's such a balance of like, is it cool? Like, I think something like Netflix trip, like a song about the office could so easily be not a good song. It could so easily be an uncool right. song. And I think we work really hard to find that balance of, oh, this actually does feel important. Um, and so it's hard to kind of do that again and again, but keep growing and keep feeling like it's honest to us. So that's, that's the thing that we spend like number one, most of our time doing. Uh, that's a very good question. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Good answer too. Um, we completely forgot, but we're supposed to mention the acoustic uh, show that we're doing. I guess that's my job. So on December 18th, we are doing an acoustic show in partnership with U.S. Cellular. Uh, you just have to enter in order to get access to it, and you can also enter to win a meet and greet with us. Okay, now back to questions. Um, let's see. Um, has street performing affected how you do shows today, and if so, how? Yes, in a very big way. I, I think it was really smart. It's kind of like throwing yourself in the deep end of the pool uh, to learn how to swim. It's, which a lot of people say is the most effective way to do it. I would, I would actually agree. It's you're you're putting yourself in the most nervous situation you could possibly be in, it, which is performing on the streets of New York covers that people don't really want to hear early in the morning while they're trying to get to work. So you're basically setting yourself up to fail. So if you can engage an audience that actively doesn't want to doesn't want to see you, you know, think about what you can do when people actually pay tickets to come see you. So if you, if you have that training, I, I think uh, you can do some pretty good stuff. So I think that's why, you know, we've been able to kind of get really creative with our shows. I think it's just really from yeah. those street performing Because days. I think that still exists to some level. Like everybody gets bored at some point. Mm. So you, everybody becomes that guy on the street that doesn't care at some point. Even at our shows, I'm sure some people are like, or hopefully not our shows, but at shows in general, people are like, all right, I get it. They're playing music and they look at their phones. So our brains go to how do we not – how do we get them to not look at their phones and constantly be looking at us? Right, totally. Yeah. Um, this question is per specifically for Ryan, I think. At Ian Jones says, what can you tell us about the new album and when is the exact release date? Why is this specifically for if me? If there is even a new album. Yeah, we've have you never? Know? We've never said it. I think we've said it a few times actually. What, what was even the question? What is the... What can you tell us oh, about Oh, what can we tell you about uh, the new what's album? what's the exact release date? It's, um... It's an album. Huh? It is... Wait, Adam, was this actually specifically for me, or...? No, I just thought you would be a good nice. person. Oh, he's a good answer. Um, album drops tomorrow. <laughs> oh, my God! Um, what? No, kidding. Uh, no, we're, uh, we're... We're working on the album. I would say we're probably, like, two-thirds of the way uh, done working on the album. Um... It's, it's different. It's yeah, like this we, we different. try to change it up. I mean, it's it's different, and but still has you know you you'll still hear these songs and say, okay, AJR definitely wrote those songs. So, which is something that we, the fine line that we try to walk with every single new album. Yeah, but I'm I'm pretty proud of what we've done so far. It's the people one. around us are are very excited. Our dad likes it a lot. So far. he likes everything. So that's not a good judge. Oh yeah, right. It's probably not good. <laughs> so Sarah asked if you had to tell your younger self one thing, what would it be and why? Oh, um, oh, uh, d truly, truly don't care what people think about you and being the, the nerd and the, you know, the, not the outcast, but the outlier in the group is going to do so, so many wonders for you, you know, later in life, whether you're in a creative field or, you know, you have a regular, you know, nine to five job being, you know, different and thinking outside the box, uh, is something that people get made fun of a lot for in, in middle school and high school and elementary school. But it's, uh, obviously it's turned out well for us because we used to get made fun of a lot for being in the band and our songs were funny and people used to make fun of us. And now we kind of, you know, stuck to our guns and we got bigger and people now like us for it. So people have heard time and time again that story. So it definitely pays off. Uh, in a second, we're going to go to some of the questions that okay, are coming cool. in here. But um, what is your favorite song that you've ever released and why? Um, you want to start? Yeah, um, probably Next Up Forever. Mm. Yeah. Are you, are you most proud of that one? 
I think so. I think it's the most adventure of a song maybe that we've ever made. I think so too. Most that, ambitious. It definitely, it was definitely the most effort that was ever put into making a song. Period. We, yeah. we, it was probably one of the only things that we didn't record inside our living room was the uh, the choir that and sound because we couldn't get all those people in our living room. We had to fly out to L.A. and it took a full day of instructing people how to sound like 1930s and 40s, you know, singers. Yeah, it's funny when we first got there, they were ready to go. Your eyes are open, like yeah, very yeah. like that's that. Is, we should have recorded the get the I first we, take yeah. and then compared it to very like 90s Disney, and we were like, no, it's got to be like. 1950s yeah. your eyes the way they pronounce things were different yeah it took like a full day and we said no like put marbles in your mouth and create you know some air in your throat and finally they got it and they they, they totally nailed it so th- th- that's cool yeah next up forever is cool I think we can start to take some questions from here well, I saw, I'm just, uh, just sc- as a more casual one yeah, I go. saw um, what, uh, what TV shows are you guys watching ooh um, Pen15 Pen I just finished really good. yeah that is such a fantastic show um extremely relatable here i'm gonna marvelous miss Maisel is good the marvelous that that's what the show is called right the marvelous okay yeah marvelous mrs Maisel. marvelous mrs Maisel. yeah she's married yeah what's your favorite movie favorite movie uh social network (laughs) what's your favorite movie i hate you so much don't even think about that I'm, i'm gonna go with it that is that is actually my favorite movie i'm gonna go with um i'll go with juno that's my other fave I'm just I'm I'm literally scrolling and not even stopping at comments. I'm just scrolling so fast. Here, here we go. Okay, okay, we're kind of at the top now. There we go. And I'm gonna go to the first question here. If you could do anything performance wise on tour, what would you do? If we could do anything. I feel like every tour we get closer and closer to like Honest This is the yeah. peak. How could we do anything more? Yeah. We, you know. Um, but we keep coming up with new things. Of like, what if we did this? That's impossible, right? What's an idea that we've had that didn't work? A cooking demonstration. No, that we, wasn't, that an, wasn't idea. an idea. <laughs> um, that we couldn't pull off? That we couldn't do. Um, oh, I do. I have one in mind, but it needs... I, I, I don't want to say it because we're going to do it at some point uh, when, we're, when we're bigger. But yeah. uh, hmm, I, don't, I honestly don't think we've ever had any that, that didn't work out. Or that can't. That can't. Yeah, literally I, I don't want to do give it. it away because eventually... Yeah, we'll eventually we'll be able to do it. I think it just has to do with how big we are, you know? So, so we're not going to give anything away. What was the reason for the, for the song Karma? This um, this, why is this for me? Because you came up with the idea. You Thank just needed me to say that. Uh, you no, came I up thought with you it. were going to steal it after you stole my favorite movie. Um, the, the song Karma was. I, I came up with the idea and I wrote the chorus because I had been in therapy for the first time in my life that year. And I thought it was a really good idea to write a song about basically, uh, you know, a, a song that takes place in a therapy session. And I guess you could talk about a lot of stuff in therapy, but, you know, a big thing was the idea of. You, you do everything right in your life and uh, nothing, still nothing is going right. And you're just kind of getting so frustrated with the concept of karma. It's starting to not feel real to you. And you're just pleading and begging for your therapist to just kind of stay by your side and help you and help you. And it's, it's, uh, it's probably one of our favorite songs we've written and a lot of people have connected to it. So I'm glad you asked the question. What is the point of Dear Winter? What's the point? What's the point of what's listening? The point of what, what if that's how she said it? Like, what's the point of this? I think I think that was the subtext of the question. So, okay, here we go. Wait, hold on. What color is the new album? I think they're asking about a synesthesia thing, but yeah, um, a lot of gray. Uh, <laughs> kind of full it's, it's a lot of what's the point? It's a lot. <laughs> now a lot of different colors. What's the name for the bridge in Bummerland? I'm not going to tell you because it is most likely going to be the name of the next album. Mm. I saw you guys at the drive-in show. Wait. Mm? Oh, wait, no, you didn't do it. Oh, yeah. Zip it again. Uh, <laughs> You're not very good at that. Why are you not good at that? <laughs> Favorite Taylor Swift song. I know you were trouble when you walked in. A shame on me now. I flew you to places I've of- never been. As soon as you chime in. It's not your favorite anymore. <laughs> Here we go. Where can we get a hat like that? I never, I never disclose the the location. You guys have to go find it for yourself. Although I'm sure if you typed in Jack Hat, it would come up. It's LLB. No, Brian. I said we don't disclose it. 
Uh, favorite song to play live? Honestly, the big songs are really fun because you can kind of go anywhere and, and, and people will know it. You can go to a tiny little fair, you know, in middle of nowhere, you know, and there'll be three people in front of the stage and they'll hopefully still know the words to week, which is a really cool feeling. So that, that that's very cool uh, that's, um, that we can say that because not a lot of people can say that they have those kinds of songs. What's your favorite woodwind instrument? This is something we think about a lot. Piccolo. Nice. That's a good answer. Did you read? <laughs> is that, I don't, is that a I'm not so sure that's a woodwind. There's wind rolling. There's through. definitely wind in it. You got that right. Did you ever think you would get to where you are today? Absolutely not. And uh, I'm not sure what goes on in other artists' minds of, yeah, I deserve this and I'm totally here, but I don't think we'll ever really understand <laughs> getting to this place yeah. because it was so slow and kind of all the odds were against us for, for such a long time. So we're, we're, we're really lucky that we just practiced enough in order to uh, have people care about the music. What is the biggest influence that made you guys want to create Neo Theater, the album? Um, what were we listening to? I uh, guess, I lot, mean, so I, I know what you're going to say. Go ahead, though. Um, a lot of uh, Israeli hip-hop. Um, that, that was a big influence on the production. Um, a lot of uh, 1930s and 40s choir music. That's how we achieved that sound from the, from the uh, beginning and the end of the album. We realized that, you know, like a lot of artists... Sorry, excuse me. A lot of fans and people will listen to the most current songs to look for the catchy, you know, melodies that, that make you feel good. But they don't realize that those melodies and catchiness was invented at some point. So if you go back to, you know, the 30s and 40s and you listen to some of these songs that you have no clue who's singing, you'll hear some of the most original, like the catchiest melodies ever. Yeah. And you'll be like, oh, my God, there's a whole new era of music that I didn't know felt so good. So we kind of dug into that and we were like, oh, every new song has these great catchy chords. So we... So that is what inspired us. What's the last time you drank water? Go. Um, Just a few minutes. Ryan, take a sip. Take a it's sip. Right now. <laughs> right now. Get it. Yeah. Your music tells a story. Ever think about writing a Broadway musical? We are actually uh, in that is in progress. Actually, in in in, in a real way, we, we're working with a uh, big executive. This 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 big producer. That's a Broadway producer. He's put on a few shows already that have done extremely well and. Uh, He's uh, working with us, so we've we've actually created a concept and we're already starting to write the song. So that is yeah. in that is in progress. That's actually like a dream come true. That is, but it's. I think since we're, I think even before we started street performing or making that the band music, I think doing a Broadway show was our dream, which is yeah. which is so so funny. What was your favorite part of the Neo Theater tour, production wise? Oh. Um, I guess the uh, the light suits at the end were that, that was a great moment. I think I'm like so impartial to the uh, to the um, when the, the the big Jack and the impartial and the little... to it, not impartial. What did I say? You said impartial. No, I don't think I said impartial. You, I hope fans are recording it because you literally did. I don't think I said it. Um, but we're working on something now that I think just may blow the neo theater production out of the water. So you'll have to wait and see what that is. Nice. When was the last time you drank water? Go. Oh, we did that one already. Wait, wait. Nope. <laughs> He's doing it again. Do you like pickles? Big fan. We love pickles. We buy them all the time. How's New York life right now? It's interesting. It is definitely, uh, it's definitely a little scary out there. Everyone should remain extremely safe and extremely, uh, you know, cautious, especially in New York and around the U.S., Stay hydrated, boys. We are. Most recent photo in your camera roll. It's got to be, you know, a FaceTime with Ryan where I hit a screenshot. I hit a, hit, a, hit a snapshot and he was doing something funny. Let's do one more. Are you making any more music for Pixar's Soul? Or was it just the overture in the trailer? I believe it was just in the trailer. For anyone that doesn't know our song, uh, the overture was used in Pixar's Soul, which I believe is going to come out at some it's point. Coming out on Christmas. Oh, is it? Very yeah, nice. Sweet. Here, we'll do one more after that. If you weren't musicians, what would you be doing now? That's a nice general one. Here, you could start, Adam. Yeah, I do um, a lot of work with human rights and some stuff with the UN, so probably something in international affairs. What about you, Jack? I, you know, I guess there's a few answers to this. I guess in, if I was completely, if I could do anything in the world and I was away from like a creative medium, I'd, I'd, I'd want to be like a professional athlete. But I have no... Nothing in my body says that I can do that, mm. but in my mind, I think that would be a really fun thing to be. But um, I mean, realistically, Ryan and I went to school for film, so I guess we would be doing something in the film arena, writing most likely for me, and Ryan would be doing craft services. Nope. What's that? Ping pong. 
Oh, that's Big Five. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, I thought you'd be scoring a movie. I thought that's what you were doing. That's how you score a movie. No, this is actually craft services. <laughs> that's you. That's butter. you spreading mustard on the sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty good. Nice. Uh, All right, December eighteenth. Uh, acoustic set with us cellular we will see you there thanks so much for your questions everyone we are ajr have a fantastic